I just came out of a relationship and felt like a bit of casual dating will be fun, so I went on to Tinder. I made it clear to the few people that I actually matched with and spoke to that I didn't want anything serious, just a dinner date or a pub night here and there. I matched with a really cute guy, let's call him Pete. He had just moved to my city and also wasn't looking for anything serious. He just wanted to meet some new people and see some local spots. The first night we met up at a well-known tapas bar. I chose this place because I had a few friends that were waitresses and bar staff there so I felt safe meeting a stranger there. He was on time. We had nice chats, really cool guy on first impression. We spoke about work, to which he responded that he's a software developer, but he's just started his freelancing career. We spoke about where he stays now that he's moved up here, and he said that he's sharing a place with some friends. Rent is quite pricey in the city, so it made sense to me. He asked where I live, and I told him that I'm lucky to have my own one-bedroom apartment in quite a nice and popular part of town. Mostly thanks to my parents that helped me save and gave me a portion of the deposit money for my 21st birthday, which I invested and grew until I had enough to put down a decent deposit. He then offered me to drop me off at home, but I said no, I'd prefer to Uber home by myself. He asked if this was because I'm going to go meet no one else after him, and I laughed because I genuinely thought it was a joke. The next time I saw Pete was about three days later. He said he knew it was fast, but he actually couldn't stop thinking about me and he wanted to see me again. This time, we met at a different restaurant, also one I chose because I went to school with the owner and knew all the staff pretty well. The place is a little bit more pricey, and he got super annoyed with me for ordering as much as I did. I couldn't understand why, since I insisted on paying for my own stuff both times we met. That night, same story. Let me drop you off at home, please. Again, I said no. While we're in the middle of this conversation, he gets a call. He stepped away, but I could still hear a faint amount. No, I don't think I want to stay with you again. Yeah, I'm with her. Don't worry about it. Okay, I'll be home soon. So now I think he's chatting to his roommate or maybe his mom, but I don't ask. He comes back to our table. Please, I insist. Bad things happen to women that Uber home this late by themselves. I'd feel better if I dropped you off. Not having the energy to argue, I tell him fine, and I put my address into his GPS. As soon as he got home, he messages me and tells me he'll be picking me up in the morning to go for a picnic. I reply that I actually have cleaning to do, but again, he insists that he'll see me at 10. Come 10 a.m. that next morning, best believe he's right outside my apartment. I get into his car, and as he leans over to kiss my cheek, I notice that his breath stinks. Obviously, I'm a little grossed out. We have our picnic, and it's quite nice. He tried to kiss me a few times, but I avoided it with everything in me. By about 4 p.m., I tell him that I really want to go home and the park we went to is about an hour and a half drive from my apartment, so I couldn't really Uber back home because it would cost a fortune. He agrees it's time to go, so we get in his car and we're off. I fell asleep in the car on the drive back, and when I woke up, he asked if we could finish the rest of the bubbly we got from mimosas up at my apartment. I said to him, I don't want to, and he just snaps. He raises his voice and says something along the lines of, What are you hiding from me? Just be honest, why are you so desperate to keep me out of your apartment? I was so confused I actually just kept quiet. He dropped me off but I could see his car across from my apartment for about half an hour before he actually left. About five minutes after he left he let me know that he's home safe and he thinks he's starting to fall for me. So naturally I'm freaked out because I made it clear that I didn't want anything serious and he said he felt the same. I said to him if that's the case I think we should take a break from hanging out with each other. About five days later he messages me and asks me if we can go for dinner again. He found an Indian cuisine place he knows I'll love. I tell him it's cool, he should just send me the address, he tells me that he'll pick me up. Until 7pm comes, he tells me he's downstairs, and as I go down to meet him, I see he's standing at my gate. I press the remote control to open the gate, and he walked inside to meet me. Show me which one is yours, I'd love to see how you live. Not hi, not how are you, that's his opening line. So now I'm naturally unsettled, I say to him that I'm starving, could we go for dinner, and I'll show him my place at a later stage. At dinner, he gets a call again. This time, he didn't step away. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can let you know by about 10. He then turns to me. Am I sleeping at your place tonight? Um, no. I don't know. I have work tomorrow. Yeah, me too. I I'll let you know, okay? No, you're not. Can you just get your things, please? And do what with them? Take them to that girl you're seeing. I'm done asking you. Now I'm sitting here in absolute shock and terror. What in the fuck is going on here? Our food arrives and we barely speak. I say to him, why did you ask if you could sleep over at my place? We're not spending time together like that. You know this. 
He then spins the story about how he just wants to hang out and, again, see how I live. I then say to him, very frankly, that I don't like having strangers in my apartment. He gets very touched and the bill arrives. As per usual, I pay for myself, he pays for himself. I say to him, I'll get an Uber home, and he says, What's the use? I already know where you live. Let me drop you off. By now, I've already decided that this will be the last time I see him. I get into his car, and I reach for my jumper that I threw in the back when he fetched me. I notice a bag in the back of the car, full of clothes and toiletries, as well as a pillow. I don't think much of it. I don't personally drive or own a car, but I know my sister always has some random shit in the back of her car. On the way home, he's dead quiet, when suddenly he says, Do you know how selfish you are? I've had no issue driving you around, but you don't want to let me sleep over. I say to him that I've never had an issue with Ubering, and if he's so touched, I also have no issue with paying him what the Ubers would have cost me. I'm over this, and I'm not even playing nice anymore. His phone rings again. Your stuff is at the security boom at the gate. Stay with your girlfriend or stay with your mom. You're fucked for taking advantage of everyone like this. I don't speak to my mom. You know this, you bitch. Now I think this is maybe an ex-girlfriend that he needs to collect things from. Before I've even had a chance to process what happened, he turns to me and starts yelling at me. I have nowhere to go. Are you fucking happy? You spoiled brat. Living off mommy and daddy's money. Getting driven around by me like I fucking work for you, bitch. My whole body got stiff with fear. I don't know if I'm going to cry or throw up. In my head, I'm just planning how I'm going to grab my bag the second he stops and run straight to the cafe under my apartment. If you run through the cafe, you can get to the gate that takes you to the back of my apartment, and it works with fingerprint access. There wasn't time to still find my keys in my bag, and I didn't want the main gate I normally use to open wide enough for him to get in when I go in. He stops at my apartment, and as planned, I jump out, run into the cafe, run out the back, through the little gate, up to the second floor, my apartment was on the fourth floor, and I hammered on a neighbor's door. I went inside and told her and her husband everything that's happened and asked if they wouldn't mind calling the cafe to explain why I ran through with no explanation in such a state. I blocked Pete and I haven't seen him since. I'm still not sure what his case was. From what I gathered, he was basically homeless and I think he wanted to get into my apartment to sleep over there for a while. I'm not sure if the girl that kept calling him was also a Tinder date that let him into her apartment and he just never left. All I know is that he scared the living daylights out of me and I never want to see him again. This is 2014. I was 17 at the time and I would have to take the bus to and from school. The bus stop was on the main road so I would have to walk a few blocks to get to the apartment complex. This is important for later. I was walking home from school one day and this Honda van pulls over. A girl comes out and introduces herself and tells me she's new to the area and wants to make new friends. I gave her my number and quickly we made plans to have dinner. Maybe a day or two later, she picks me up in the same van, but this time with a man who was driving and also another young female. She did not mention these other two people, but I didn't think much of it. It was a lot of red flags I ignored. I was young and naive. The man was doing all the talking during our dinner, and the other two girls were quiet. Another red flag. He put on this fake nice tone in his voice the whole time, asking me questions. Then he started getting weird, like saying how he could read minds and started telling me all this information that he knew about me. I had no idea how he knew all of this, so I believed him. After dinner, we stopped by their house, which was in a whole other city where my apartment is. Remember how the girl told me that she stayed by me? Another red flag. It was a really nice house, though, and he had a Mercedes in the driveway. My young mind was intrigued. He told me they're all roommates and hustle together. He took me home that night, though, by myself, and was trying to convince me to be a part of their lifestyle. A couple days after, at this point, I'm only texting the man. The girl held barely any conversation with me, but he tricked me into thinking that he was a super nice person. He asked me to pack some clothes and spend the night, and I agreed. After hours of talking, he convinced me to leave my mom's house and stay with them. I texted my mom that I was moving out, and as I was already almost 18, she was okay with it for some reason. This is when shit hits the fan. He was not the nice, charming person that I had met. Only after I moved in did he tell me that those girls were sex workers and that I would become one too when I turned 18. He started telling me how to do my hair or how to dress. He gave me a whole new phone and number with a tracking app on it. I wasn't allowed to contact my mother or any of my family or friends. He would keep insisting he could read my mind and hear my thoughts. Even the smallest mistakes I made, he would punish me for it. He duct taped my hands and feet, tased 